Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, AMD has revealed a few more bits of information about their upcoming CPU and GPU products. And I figured that it calls for another news video because some of the things AMD have talked about tie up a few loose ends from their previous Zen 4 announcement. On top of that, we're getting a few small bits of information about RDNA 3 plus roadmaps for future products. So let's talk about all of the information AMD showed at their financial analyst day. I'll start this one by talking about the processor related news, specifically Zen 4. At Computex a few weeks back, the big story were AMD's performance claims surrounding their upcoming Ryzen 7000 processors. And there was a bit of controversy about the statement that Zen 4 would have a greater than 15% single thread performance gain versus Zen 3. Many people believed AMD were sandbagging with this information. That is to say they were deliberately providing a worse than realistic performance claim to get some benefit in the future like more positive reviews or to have their competitors change their plans. In our recent Q&A we talked about how this would be a bit of a strange strategy for AMD to take and how it didn't make a heap of sense to us. Today AMD has revealed the actual IPC increase for Zen 4 versus Zen 3 which they are claiming is 8 to 10%. We also know that Zen 4 will clock up to 5.5 gigahertz in some instances, or potentially above that, which equates to a 12% frequency uplift compared to the fastest Zen 3 chip. Combining these figures would lead to a single thread performance uplift of roughly 22%, taking the middle of AMD's IPC gain range, if the Zen 4 cores were able to sustain 5.5 GHz. Now, we don't know yet if that's the case for stressful workloads, given AMD only showed that clock speed in a relatively light gaming workload. There are other considerations here as well, like how some workloads will benefit from the IPC gains more than others, but that number should be a rough ballpark figure based on AMD's public information to this point. While the 22% performance gain would be better than just a flat 15%, it doesn't change all that much about what we said in our Computex coverage. Currently, Intel's older lake processors like the Core i9-12900K and 12900KS are 20-30% to faster for single threading than Zen 3. We've measured as high as a 33% advantage for the 12900KS versus 5950X in Cinebench R23 and the low 20% range for apps like Photoshop. If the combination of an 8-10% to IPC uplift with 12% high frequencies turns out to be spot on, this would mean Zen 4 is only capable of matching Intel's year-old Alder Lake architecture in these workloads, and it will leave AMD in a precarious position up against Raptor Lake, Intel's next CPU line that we're expecting before the end of this year. However, single thread is only one aspect of CPU performance. Other areas to Zen 4 are sounding very impressive. AMD today showed a greater than 25% performance per watt gain over Zen 3 and a greater than 35% overall performance gain versus Zen 3, measured in Cinebench multi-threading. Now, astute viewers will probably quickly realize that to achieve a 35% gain in performance from a 25% gain in performance per watt, power consumption will have to increase. But it won't have to increase that much. Just an 8% increase in power will see that gap accounted for. Of course, like with the single thread numbers, AMD are just stating greater than figures here, so we don't know the exact numbers. But it does suggest that Ryzen 7000 will be reasonably efficient at achieving its high performance. The multi-thread number, which has been alluded to previously by AMD and could be higher than 40% based on what they've said, is also incredibly strong. Firstly, let's explain how this number could be so much larger than the single thread gain, and it comes down to frequency. While a single core clock increase from 4.9 to 5.5 GHz is only a 12% gain, going from an all core clock speed of roughly 4 GHz to 5 GHz is a much larger 25% gain, and they've previously shown off 5 GHz all core for Zen 4. When you combine a 25% all-core frequency bump with a 9% IPC increase, we get a 36% performance uplift, slightly higher than the 35% baseline figure AMD are quoting here. In our testing, Intel's best Old Lake processor can be up to 14% faster than the Ryzen 9 5950X for multi-thread workloads, but it often trades blows or even comes in behind, depending on the workload. AMD only needs a modest performance uplift to take the multi-thread performance crown, so a 35% performance uplift would see Zen 4 in a 16-core configuration easily become the fastest processor in these workloads, and there would be plenty of headroom to challenge Raptor Lake. AMD confirmed other aspects about their Zen 4 lineup today. 
AVX512 will be supported, although it's unclear if this will be enabled for consumer parts. We can certainly expect it in servers, but you never know, AMD could choose to disable it for regular Ryzen 7000, like Intel did for Alder Lake. AI instructions will also be included, though AMD didn't go into specifics. And of course, we also previously learned that Zen 4 will support DDR5, PCIe 5.0, and include an integrated RDNA2 GPU in the I.O. die. Beyond Zen 4, AMD confirmed that there will be a vCache version of Zen 4, which is great news for gamers. The Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is already the best gaming CPU in our opinion, delivering performance equivalent to Intel's faster CPUs but at a lower price. Adding all that cache to a CPU architecture that delivers higher clock speeds and an 8-10% IPC increase, as well as DDR5 memory support, points to a big jump in gaming performance. We're still not sure how regular Zen 4 will fare for gaming as AMD hasn't disclosed any performance targets yet. You'll also spot here Zen 4C. This is a compact, efficient core designed for high density server applications. It'll be coming to AMD's Epic Burger Mode server chip, but has yet to be announced for any consumer applications. But Workstation fans will be pleased to hear that Ryzen Threadripper 7000 will exist and is scheduled for a 2023 release for high core count desktop users. Looking into the future, AMD announced the Zen 5 architecture is on track for release in 2024, which is following a typical release cadence for AMD that we've seen over the last few generations. AMD are describing Zen 5 as an all-new microarchitecture, rather than an iteration on Zen 4 though, of course. Many aspects of the CPU design will carry over from previous products as a full redesign would be incredibly challenging. As you might expect given even Zen 4 isn't out yet, there weren't a lot of details given on Zen 5, aside from confirmation that there will be a Zen 5 Vcash product and Zen 5C compact efficient cores for some lines. Perhaps the only tangible piece of information given here was the mix of process technology, TSMC 4 nanometer and 3 nanometer. This suggests Zen 5 will bridge across TSMC's two main node versions. 3 nanometer is a brand new node, the successor to 5 nanometer that we expect will bring significant performance and efficiency improvements. But 4 nanometer is effectively just optimized 5 nanometer, so it'll be interesting to see how AMD combines a step up in process node with older tech for this new architecture. The other important pieces of information to come out of this event relate to GPUs. We didn't get any information on the upcoming RDNA 3 architecture at Computex, but today AMD has reminded everyone that RDNA 3 is indeed on track for release in 2022, built on TSMC's 5 nanometer process tech. I'm sure that we'll get another teaser or two in the coming months, but here's what we know for now. AMD are claiming another generation where performance per watt increases by over 50%. If you've been keeping track over the years, AMD also claimed a 50% performance per watt increase for RDNA over GCN, and then another 50% for RDNA 2 over RDNA. The actual figures we got depended on the product and the exact comparison, but it's fair to say the last few generations have been substantial upgrades for AMD's GPU family. As well as a greater than 50% performance per watt improvement, AMD are also talking about chiplet packaging, essentially confirming the rumors from many months ago that AMD GPUs, at least for some products, would shift from simple monolithic designs to a chiplet-based structure. This has the potential to improve yields and provide notable advantages when building these large GPUs on a brand new process node, though we'll have to wait and see what configurations of chiplets AMD are deciding to use. However, it should be noted that if the rumors are to be believed, and they often aren't, so as always take it with a grain of salt, not all of AMD's upcoming Navi 3X products will use chiplets or be built on TSMC 5 nanometer. The current expectation is those technologies will be used for the highest end parts, while the more mid-range products will stick to older nodes and monolithic designs. AMD didn't talk about any of this today, so we don't know for sure what will happen. What AMD did talk about is an upgraded compute unit and next-gen Infinity Cache, which I think are expected upgrades. Of course, the claimed performance per watt gain doesn't align with the various rumors this generation that GPU performance will double compared to the previous generation, but there are many ways to achieve this, such as simply increasing the power consumption of each part. But it's worth noting that AMD weren't making any actual performance claims here, it's just a very early discussion on RDNA 3 that we expect to be elaborated on significantly in the coming months. In the future, we can expect RDNA 4 in 2024 built on an advanced node that AMD wasn't willing to disclose. Like with their CPU line, this keeps up a consistent cadence where we get new products every two years or so. Of course, since we are so far away from RDNA 4, no details at all to speak of.
Zen 4 and RDNA 3 technologies will be combined into AMD's next generation APU for laptops, codenamed Phoenix Point, which is expected in 2023. Also listed on the slide here is AIE, which refers to their AI hardware acceleration. Then at some point around 2024, we're looking at a Strix Point APU featuring Zen 5, RDNA 3 Plus, and advanced process node technology. That's pretty much it for AMD's consumer announcements at their Financial Analyst Day. But of course, the idea of this event isn't really to announce new products, just to give updates to the financial dudes that tell you whether to buy or sell AMD stock. This is why we got so many future roadmaps and statements about what AMD is working on, rather than demos or things like that for upcoming products. There also weren't that many surprises out of today's event, more just confirmations of things that most people thought would happen. You'd be pretty silly to guess that the architecture coming after Zen 4 would be named anything other than Zen 5, for example, but at the very least, there are lots of exciting products coming up in the next few years. I'm particularly curious to see how a chiplet-based design works for a GPU. And of course, we'll be seeing stronger competition from Intel and Nvidia than ever, with products like Raptor Lake and the RTX 40 series both expected before the end of 2022 as well. Anyway, that's it for this brief news update. A few interesting tidbits here from AMD's event, discussing Zen 4, RDNA 3, and all sorts of other stuff. So hope you enjoyed this one. If you do want to support our independent testing, Floatplane, Patreon, links to those in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our Discord chat, where you can chat about the news and all sorts of other topics with us and other members. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.